There's a story currently trending from Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports, it's a famous kind of online digital pop culture, uh, you know, sports outlet. And they did what they're calling power ranking the top 10 female singers of all time. They rank the top 10. And some people are not very happy. Let me read it to you. According to Barstool Sports and data gathered by the ULL, I don't know who the ULL is, number 10 is an artist, I think I've heard her name once or twice, but someone named Addison Ray. All right. Number nine is Adele. I mean, you know, they got to keep it current. Fine. Number eight is Tina Turner. All right. Number seven is Ashley Simpson. Ashley Simpson is the sister of Jessica Jessica. Simpson, who actually really can sing. I believe Jessica used to sing with BB and CC Wines, if I have that right. She actually can sing. But Ashley Simpson is number seven. Mm -hmm. Number six is Beyonce. Number five, one, two, three, four, five is Aretha Franklin at number five. Number four is Lady Gaga. Number four. Number three is JoJo. I can't name you a JoJo single today. She she did a remake of SWV's Week. Yeah, she had a song back when I was like, Middle school, high school, like she hasn't been relevant in years. She only had like two songs that ever started. But continue. (laughs) Number two is Whitney Houston. Number two. And the number one female singer of all time, according to Barstool Sports, is Mariah Carey. I'm just gonna keep on (laughs) waiting. First of all, you're wrong for that. But um, <laughs> Let me just say this. Um, I understand they're not going to put in my choices like Jennifer Holiday. You know, I understand they're not probably, probably not going to put in Patti LaBelle because they don't have that kind of soul. Like, I, I understand they may not, you know, put all that in there. But this list is uh, un-American, it is ungodly, and it is disrespectful. It's disrespectful to all artists, but I'm also wondering how some people even got on the list. Like um, Ashley Simpson, she had a a record that charted when I was like in eighth grade. Um, But beyond that, she didn't do anything. She actually married Diana Ross's son so that she could stay in the music industry. This is a girl who does not really, you know, she, she, she doesn't matter. And then you have Addison Rae, who was best known as a Kardashian BFF and the girl who steals dances of Black kids on uh, TikTok and then goes on TV and does them herself and gets paid. So I'm like, I didn't even know she sang at all. Like, she's a, she's a social influencer, basically off the backs of Black creatives. Um, I, I have many, many questions as to, I, I think that some people said that this is supposed to be a joke list, but even with that... <laughs> rankings are extremely odd and i get that you're going to be multi multicultural multi-genre but even if we take into pop you know um r&b um other other styles of music country whatever these people that were chosen over half of them aren't even stars in in, in the in the arena that they're supposed to be representing so I'm also just where, where is barbara streisand and celine dion like y'all could take out addison ray and take out <laughs> jojo I mean, and Ashley Simpson, and I think JoJo can sing, but Barbara Streisand, Celine Dion, 
Hell, if you want to throw in some Taylor Dane, like if you want to give me a, if you want to give me a little bit, if you're going through folks who, who may not have the kind of career that, you know, they had back in the day. But I thought Barbara Streisand and Celine Dion were like the, the biggest, you know, the biggest of the biggest, like, you know, get more. I think they transcend a lot of things. So to see these people thrown in again, I didn't know. I don't think Addison Ray sings at all. So, I mean, that one is clearly a joker. But to throw in these folks that don't matter, and I mean, no shade to Mariah Carey. I do love Mariah Carey. I love Mariah. Above Whit- I, Mariah would not put herself above Whitney or Aretha Franklin. <laughs> like, like, Mariah would <laughs> Mariah be like, all right, we're not, we're not going to do that. Now, and also, where's Shaka Khan? I mean, Shaka Khan is mainstream. Where is Shaka Khan? Through the fire, to the limit, to the wall. And I don't Where think Lady Shaka. Gaga would put herself in this category. No. I, uh, before no, Lady Gaga, before if you're going to do of all, of all time, before Lady Gaga, you would have Judy Garland, Liza Minnelli, before Lady Gaga. I mean, come on now. But it's funny. It's just, it's just really, really funny. They tried it's it. Interesting. They tried it. And, <laughs> and let's be clear. Anybody who has any eardrums knows that either Whitney or Aretha, they are number one. They are number one. That's just, there's no debating. Any that. other placement is just like, why? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Either Whitney or Aretha are most certainly, I, I can, I'm Beyonce, of course, Tina Turner, and I think Adele's a good singer, but I, I guess they wanted to go for diversity, maybe. I don't know what they were trying to do, but you put in uh, Addison Ray and Ashley in. That said, why don't we do our own list? Why don't I pick five and you pick five? And let's just already say, given Whitney, Mariah, and Aretha. Just that's that's there. But let's do our own list of just of Clay Kane Show Urban View featuring Amisha Cross of where we are. So I'll give you one. And if you all want to call in and say who your fave is, do that until we change things up and go to exonerated. It's a heavy show. I wanted to change things up. So for me, female singer, I, I already said it, is Jennifer Holiday. That woman belt, I think she is the best voice to have ever graced the Broadway stage. It doesn't get any better. That song, And I Am Telling You, she could still sing it. Nobody else can do it. She really helped to compose that song and didn't get the credit for it. I mean, Jennifer Holiday is just simply the, the voice. It's Texas. It's grit. And she has another, also a great catalog outside of And I Am Telling You. But phenomenal. It is absolutely brilliant what she can do with her voice. And I think part of the reason why she didn't blow up like, like she should have is because of sizeism, is because of colorism. But Jennifer Holiday to me, is simply just one of the best. What about you, Amisha? So you said we can't, uh, Whitney and Aretha are not on our list. So, um, oh, that is so hard. I would probably put in, I'd go old school. I'd probably put in Etta James. Etta James, the first bad girl R&B. Her voice, I mean, her, her voice was crazy. I'd probably put in Etta James. You know, Etta James uh, got arrested at a hotel. I believe it was in, in Indianapolis because she was in a hotel room with drag queens. And they said that was back in the day where you men and women couldn't be in hotel rooms unless they were married. And, but they were drag queens and she was chilling with them and she got arrested with a pack of drag queens, <laughs> Etta James, the first bad girl of R&B. Etta James once said, I've always been on the verge of a breakdown or a breakthrough. At last, um, she has a great version of all I could do was cry she uh had just uh, oh um tell mama tell mama all about it uh sunday kind of love um something's got a hold of me and her nickname back in the day was miss peaches okay. i didn't know that that's old school that's old school. <laughs> nickname there back in the day was uh was uh miss peaches all right let me give you another one uh patty labelle i mean for me patty is operatic she is uh, the, uh, the best concert I've ever seen in my life is Patti LaBelle. And there wasn't a whole lot of dancing and there wasn't fireworks, whatever, whatever. But when I saw Patti LaBelle in concert, 
it was phenomenal. She blew up the entire, and she said that her voice was shaky that night. I didn't hear shaky. It was ap- absolute just perfection, hitting every single note. So amazing and feeling it like you felt it. And that was the year that uh, Luther Vandross had passed away. And I saw her New Year's Eve one. I saw her like 20 times, but I saw her on New Year's Eve. Uh, and she just in Atlantic City and she just killed it. She just, and, and Patty once said for everybody that's what well, one I, I asked her one time, I said, you know, what do you say to people that say uh, you always trying to outsing somebody? And she said, if your power doesn't match mine, I don't have anything to do with that. And I said that that is a metaphor for life. If, if your power doesn't match somebody else's, I mean, if your power doesn't match yours, what, what, what they got to do with you? So, Amisha, what else you got? We have to go. Through. So I'm going to pick somebody who's not of, of you know, of, of our general genres. I'm going to go with Patsy Cline. Oh, Patsy Cline could sing. Crazy, sweet dreams. She had a very I, unique voice, and a lot right of the songs she wrote and the songs that she sang have been redone 500 times over. And I think that her voice was extremely timeless. Absolutely. No, no Patsy Cline, she has one song called She's Got You. And in the line, she goes, uh, um, I've got your picture, but she's got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> walking after midnight. Uh, uh, there was some soul there. She, Patsy Cline had, had a very milky voice. There was just something mm-hmm. right there. Country, but just real, real good, good singer. Uh, for me, this is this artist probably could, this is a different genre, obviously, but this artist probably is right up there with Aretha Franklin. And that's Leah Teen Price. Leah Teen Price, opera singer. Uh, the, uh, I believe she was the original Aida Leotine Price's voice, one of her quotes is, um, she was performing and she said, I am here and you will know that I am the best. <laughs> that's that's Leotine Price. And let me tell you something. Every opera singer wants to, Leotine Price is the Serena Williams of opera. She is the Muhammad Ali of opera. Like every opera singer can only try to appeal to be Leotine Price. In her farewell show in the early 1980s uh, of Aida, one thing that's just disrespectful in opera is uh, to ever break character. But while she's doing the the climax of Aida, the crowd gives her a seven-minute standing ovation in the middle of the show. This is her her farewell tour, uh, farewell performance, uh, gave her a standing ovation and she, it's, it's, on, it's on, um, on, on YouTube. She falls to her knees. Just drama. Amisha, it's drama. Falls to her knees and she collapses. Not, I mean, it's a fall, but like on her knees. Puts her hand to her heart and you see tears in her eyes. And the audience keeps on clapping. Because this, this, she was in her 50s at this point. In her 50s. She's still alive now, in her 90s now. But they literally couldn't take it because she was killing it so hard in her 50s and she falls to her knees and they keep on clapping. And then she gets back up and starts belting it out again. Leah Team Price is the best. That voice is an instrument. It is an instrument. I know that they, they ain't that, that, that cultural as, as Barstool, <laughs> Barstool, Barstool, whatever it's called, ain't going to have that. But Leah Team Price is the voice of God, plain and simple. Give me one more, Misha, before we have to head out. I'll give you two. I'll say Coco Taylor for blues and Mahalia Jackson for gospel. Oh, Coco Taylor. Coco Taylor. Oh, my God. Coco Taylor. Coco Taylor could sing. Coco Taylor had it. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Coco Taylor is, is amazing. Mahalia Jackson, I mean, my, my goodness. Uh, down by the Riverside, Precious Lord. I mean, she sang at Dr. King's funeral. Mm-hmm. Uh, she told Dr. King at the March on Washington Tell him about the dream. Tell him about the dream. And he goes into the I have a dream speech. Uh, really just just incredible. All right. Last one I'll give you. And some folks don't say she's a great singer. I say she is because her voice was so special and so unique. And the way she could finesse a melody, I think, is really important. And she was a stone cold musician. She was a pianist first. And that's Nina Simone. Nina Simone is one of my favorites. I mean, uh, her version of Summertime, 
her vor- her version of um, "Black is the color of my true love's hair." I believe that was originally a Scottish song. Uh, her her political songs like Four Women," "My Name Is Peaches," "Mississippi," "Goddamn." I mean, I love Nina Simone. I, I love love Nina Simone. Nina Simone is uh, an icon, and I can recall she was um, performing in New York in the late '90s. And I wanted to go so bad, but I was broke. And I was like, it's either I eat this week <laughs> or I go see Nina Simone. And I decided to eat and I regret it to this day because Nina Simone is one of my favorites. I love her. I listen to her constantly. Uh, just crazy, crazy, amazing icon. And I had no issue cussing somebody out. And I appreciate that. 